My name's Garrick, welcome back to The Woodshed. So I decided to make a video finally that's not me just talking to you in the garage and boring you to death. Today I wanted to answer a question that probably nobody else had but me, but there's a possibility of how many textbooks it takes to stop a bullet, or how many textbooks a bullet can go through. I've always kind of thought like a textbook would stop some bullets, maybe not others. You know, rifle bullets probably go straight through type of thing, maybe it could stop a pistol bullet is my theory right now. I recently found a bunch of textbooks in an old camper shell that I had back in high school. And uh, since they're all water damaged and no good anymore, um, I figured that shooting them shouldn't be too big of a deal. So what I wanna do is take a couple different guns, a couple different calibers and see how many textbooks I can make it through. I'll start out with just one small one. And as soon as we make it through, I'll step it up and see how many we can make it through. I've lined these up in the order that I think that they'll penetrate the textbooks. I think the bird shot, I have some steel bird shot that um, I'll shoot out of this shotgun. I don't think that's gonna go very far through, but uh, we'll see that. I've got this 22 caliber rifle right here. I have a concealed carry nine millimeter. It's got a little bit shorter barrel, so it's not gonna generate as much speed coming out, and I think it'll penetrate less. I'm sorry if it's a little bit noisy. As soon as I got up here, it all of a sudden turned into a windstorm and a rainstorm, so uh, if it's a little bit of wind noise, I'm sorry for that. This is the first opportunity that I've had to come out here and make a video for several months, so I thought I'd take advantage. Forgot to check the weather and this is what happens. Like I was saying, I got my Glock 19 right here. The difference between the barrel length is, is that much, maybe about an inch, somewhere around there, which you wouldn't think is very much. We'll see how much of a difference that makes. Then I've got my 1911 chamber in 45 ACP. I actually don't know which is gonna penetrate more, the nine millimeter or the 45. There's a good chance that the 9mm will penetrate a little bit better than the 45 just because it's a larger, slower bullet, but it's also got more power behind it, so we'll see. Obviously, the 5.56 is a very fast round coming out of a long barrel. I've seen it shoot through everything, including three-quarter inch steel. Uh, more, more of a soft steel, but still, it's pretty impressive to see. I don't know if the history books have a chance against the AR-15, but we'll check that out. The largest caliber I brought today was a 6.5 Creedmoor. This is an enormous bullet. Look how huge this bullet is. Look at all that powder and all of that projectile. It's gonna be insane to see that. I don't think this textbooks have a chance. People say the 5.56 is such a scary round. This is a 5.56 right here. This is a 6.5 Creedmoor. Look at the difference between those. No chance. All right, let's do it. Here's the 12 gauge with the steel bird shot. Just hit one book. All right, so it hit in this top left corner. Looks like we got through a little bit less than half the book. So we'll keep going up from there. Now we got the 22 rifle. It's a Ruger 1022 takedown. See how far we can get through that book. I'll probably hit it a couple times just to make sure. I saw some dirt kick up behind it, so I think we got definitely got through it. Oh yeah, that thing is toasted. I'm gonna put another book behind it and we'll keep going. The cover of this book caught the jacket right in Ben Franklin's nose right there. All right, we'll move up to pistols and keep going. This is the nine millimeter out of the Walther PPS. It looks like it went in and exploded out the side. These are penetrating a lot better than I thought they would. All right, I've got a couple rounds out of this Glock 19 and uh, we'll see if we can get through two books. It looks like I shot a little bit low. I'm gonna try to get more centered. 
That's hot. Check that out. That's so crazy. I've always seen videos where they catch the bullet like that. You can see the bullet after it's fired, but I've never actually done it. This is really cool. Full metal jacket. Now we got 45 ACP out of this 1911. See how that compares to the nine millimeter. Jeez, that other book is completely shredded. Can I just say this, this has been extremely fun. I'm not even done yet, but this is so fun. It looks like we caught a ton. We caught a ton of bullets in here. Check those out. So far we're catching all the pistol bullets with two books. So two textbooks should stop them. It's really starting to rain. We'll see if we can grab some uh, footage of the other. All right, we're finally moving up to the big stuff. Here's the AR-15 with some 5.56. It went through all three. It didn't stop it at all. There's a few in there that stopped, but it looks like the majority went straight through it. So let's just shoot it with the big gun and be done. To answer the question, three books does not stop an AR-15. I think the majority are gonna get through four as well. It's just really cutting through them like butter. I don't think paper is the best, the best uh, bulletproofing. Here's the biggest caliber I brought, the 6.5 Creedmoor. Thanks for watching my video. Sorry it's so rainy and windy. Make sure you comment down below if you have any ideas similar to this you'd want to see. You know I'm up for it. Here we go. Not a chance. 